G'day, it's Mark and welcome back to the channel. Today we look at the last model in the fifth series or generation of Falcon, the EL. The EL Falcon was produced from October 1996 to August 1998. The EL Falcon was one of Ford's most popular Falcons ever made. A big focus by the Ford engineers was to remedy some of the criticism that had been levelled at the EF in terms of the vehicle's handling dynamics. While there were improvements made to EF Series 2, the EL improved on that once again, and it was a far more responsive vehicle in terms of handling than the previous series. Safety was a really big focus for many of the Australian manufacturers, uh, Holden and Ford alike. Holden had launched its Acclaim model, which was a safety-focused vehicle. But the uh, EL was the first Australian-built car to have a driver's airbag as standard across the range with the option of a passenger side airbag. So safety was a big, big focus for this model, as was the family theme. Compared to the EF, the most obvious visual changes was the return of the front grille for the GLI and Futura models. The grille itself was now elliptical in shape, and it was a trait that was shared by other Ford models available at that time, both in Australia and overseas. This gave the car a more rounded visual theme at the front. From the rear, amber indicators returned to the Falcon and the Futura sedan models, which was a major retrograde step, in my opinion. If you look at the EF episode that I did on the Falcon History series, you'll uh, learn more about uh, how that uh, rear tail lamp uh, treatment influenced uh, what I did on the VX Commodore. Thankfully, the high series uh, sedan models, the Fairmont and the Gear, retained the red and white or the red and clear tail light treatment. And this was also adopted for the station wagons, giving a, a nice, fresh, revised appearance. During the uh, EF introduction, the six-cylinder received quite a significant upgrade over the ED. But when uh, the EL was introduced, the major change when compared to that model was a, uh, the change from the coil pack ignition system. That had been introduced in EF, and that was uh, had some reliability issues. So uh, they rolled that back to a distributor style ignition uh, from the ED series when they launched the EL. Engine output for the six remained at 157 kilowatts or 211 horsepower and 357 newton meters, which is 265 foot pounds of torque. The five liter V8 was available as an option and this had 170 kilowatts of power at launch. As I said earlier, the EL brought with it improvements to the handling as well as the braking system. Speed sensitive power steering on the Fairmont gear made parking more straightforward without compromising high speed uh, feel. With the introduction of the new models, buyers could now purchase a Falcon with standard uh, ABS brakes, optional on the GLI, featuring the latest Bosch 5.3 module. The biggest advancement with the EL was the improvement to the handling woes from the EF. And uh, there were also improvements established to the, uh, the steering. Engineers at Tickford have discovered that by lowering the pivot point of the Watts linkage on the rear suspension by 20 millimetres, or 0.8 of an inch, that they could uh, improve the roll oversteer effect, which had been a big issue with the uh, EF. And that could be eliminated. Previously on the EF models, during hard cornering, the rear end of the car often felt as, as if it could not keep up with the front. This resulted in unpredictable car handling at times, where it delayed the weight transfer from the rear to the front. This previous issue uh, with the roll oversteer on the EF was also exacerbated in wet weather conditions, so it was a really important improvement that was made to the EL series. And as I said, although the problem had been addressed to some degree on the EF2 update, the EL became the first base level Falcon to feature a rear suspension setup that could complement the precision of the rack and pinion steering introduced in the EA Falcon eight years earlier. 
these changes allowed Ford to uh, soften the spring rates, and uh, which provided a, a better ride while still uh, not compromising the handling integrity of the vehicle. There were 10 variants of the EL model. Six cylinder variants came standard with a five speed manual and the option of a four speed automatic transmission, with the exception of the XR8, which could be purchased with the five speed manual transmission. All V8s were fitted with a four speed automatic. It'll be interesting to know out there were there any uh, five speed Fairmont gears, for example, in the manual? I don't know. It'll be interesting to find out. The GLI was the, the standard Falcon, that was the volume car selling mainly to fleets and the spec level of that vehicle was fairly similar to the previous uh, EF model. Standard engine being the six cylinder uh, with the option of the, uh, the winds of V8 which at launch had 170 kilowatts. The Futura was the next model in the range which featured ABS brakes, front power windows, cruise control a num number of other luxury features like back seat headrests, enhanced sound system, and to distinguish it from the uh, the GLI, body coloured uh, components replace the black plastic type for things like mirrors. Ford also marketed the uh, luxury Fairmont models. The first of them, uh, the standard Fairmont, came with a six cylinder engine uh, with a uh, option of a Windsor five litre V eight. And building on the equipment level of the Futura, the Fairmont gained automatic climate control air conditioning, trip computer, power windows on all doors, oil pressure and battery level gauges, front and rear illuminated footwells, electric aerial, full velour interior. From an exterior point of view, the car had the more prominent front grille, a larger bonnet bulge, uh, differentiated headlamps. Again, I discussed this uh, on the EF series. Check that one out if you haven't watched it. Uh, and so it really did uh, present very well. The Fairmont also had 15-inch 12-spoke alloy wheels. The Fairmont was also fitted with uh, chrome insert inside the body mouldings and uh, carried over tail lights, as I said, in the red and the clear from the previous model. The Fairmont gear offered a combination of luxury and performance, which was emphasised most effectively by making use of the uh, standard six cylinder engine from the XR6 with the five litre V8 remaining an option. A standard limited slip differential also provided better handling than the Fairmont, as did improved variable ratio power steering. Equipment wise, the Fairmont gear gained uh, a more powerful nine speaker stereo system, passenger airbag, thicker five millimeter side glass for better sound absorption, uh, wood grain trim, Chrome door handles, uh, which are very nice, particularly on the uh, on inside door handles made of metal, not plastic. An accent such as uh, leather wrap steering wheel and handbrake handle, leather upholstery uh, was an option. The cars did ver present very, very well. Uh, these EF and EL series Falcons, particularly in the luxury models, had really, really nice interiors. And externally to differentiate the Fairmont from the gear, the center bar of the chrome grille was color coded to the exterior paint. And the car also had unique 15 inch eight spoke alloy wheels. In terms of the sport models, the biggest difference for the XR series was the standard uh, engines. The XR6 and XR8 boasted, uh, the six had a 164 kilowatt, 220 horsepower six cylinder. And the XR8 was released with a 170 kilowatt, 228 horsepower engine. Personally, I would never have released the V8 with such a small increase over the six. Ford obviously realized that, and so the V8 was later upgraded to a power output of 185 kilowatts or 248 horsepower, and that was in October 1997. The upgraded transmission and exhaust system were unique to the XR range, as was the exterior styling treatment. Uh, with the XR exclusive quad headlamp uh, treatment, styling treatment, but now with the addition of a central grille. Both XR6 and XR8 came standard with limited slip differentials and specially tuned suspension. Body kits were installed to improve the aesthetics and the aerodynamics. So in the first series of the XR8 with the 170 kilowatt engine, 824 of those were built. And... Uh, with the second series, 
uh, which had the 185 kilowatt engine or 248 horsepower, there were 784 of those made. Other big news in the EL range was the release or the return of the, uh, the Falcon GT. So the GT had a Tickford Engineering Ford 5-litre uh, V8, uh, which was re regarded or known as the G SVO GT 45 litre V8. And that produced 200 kilowatts of power, which was 268 horsepower. And uh, that was achieved through the use of special SVO GT 40 cylinder heads, a high compression ratio of 9.0 to 1, larger valves, heavy duty valve springs, roller cam followers, fuel injection with a larger throttle body and exhaust extractors. The ELGT had a 3.45 ratio differential with a live rear axle and its top speed was around 230 kilometres an hour or 140 miles an hour. Unlike what was first anticipated, the 30th anniversary ELGT was based loosely on a Fairmont gear rather than the XR models. So it had very much a luxury sport theme. There were only 250 cars built for Australia. 135 had the four-speed automatic and 115 had the five-speed manual. 15 GTs were also built for New Zealand and two went to South Africa. I've got to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the EL GT. Uh, they're interesting cars these days, but I thought the front styling treatment yeah, and the styling treatment overall, it was more of a caricature of a GT. The front grille treatment reminded me of a medieval knight uh, helmet or even uh, another famous uh, uh, mask that you might be familiar with. But uh, I felt that the EB GT was a much more cohesive and much more integrated design. Be interesting to see what you or hear what you guys think. What do you reckon uh, was the better looking car, the EL GT or the EB? There were also a number of uh, limited edition models during the EL launch. Uh, the Falcon Sapphire edition was launched shortly after the debut of the VT Commodore in September 1997, obviously to compete with what was an all-new model versus a run-out or, you know, an older platform in the EL. Uh, and the name was reused uh, from the Ford Sierra Sapphire that was sold in Europe. It was a limited edition model, and uh, there was two variants based on the GLI Falcon or the Futura, fitted with additional features. However, the list depended on the base model chosen. All sapphires had 15-inch alloy wheels and metallic paint as standard. Other responses to the VT Commodore were the Falcon Classic and the Falcon S models. And similarly to the sapphire, they too were limited editions based on either a GLI or a Futura. Standard for the Falcon S included a six-stack CD player, air conditioning, and alloy wheels. And they were identical to those fitted to the XR6 and XR8 models for the earlier ED range. Later in March 1998, six months before the AU Falcon, a Sapphire II was introduced. From a motorsport point of view, uh, the Stone Brothers Racing took first place at the 1998 Bathurst 1000 Classic, uh, and that had been a long time between drinks. The Eel Falcon holds a significant place in Ford Australia's racing history, as it was the only Falcon to take victory at Bathurst 1000 in the decade between 1995 and 2005. Also of note was that Glenn Seaton won the 1997 Australian Touring Car Championship driving a Ford Credit sponsored EL Falcon. Alongside the EL model Falcons, the uh, Falcon Utes and Vans continued with an XH2 designation. There are a variety of uh, versions. There was the Falcon Longreach, uh, the Falcon Longreach Splash, the Falcon Longreach Special Edition, uh, there was also a uh, XH2 Falcon XR8 and XR6. There was uh, one that I'd like particularly is a Falcon Longreach S V8. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, Longreach uh, panel vans. And uh, yeah, that, that continued on again based on that older platform that had been released in, uh, in X XD, but had been heavily uh, updated to coincide with EF with the uh, XH uh, model. 
Total production for the EL Falcon was 141,056. Hope you enjoyed that episode on the EL Falcon range. Uh, make sure you uh, hit the like button and uh, please subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes of Falcon History. I will be releasing shortly some Holden and also Chrysler History as well. Plus there's a range of other vehicles as you can see on the, uh, on the channel. Make sure if you haven't seen the full uh, Falcon History series, check out the playlist. Uh, just hit play all and you can relax and watch the show. Uh, behind me here actually is a new boot lid for the... Uh, the EB Fairmont Gear V8. So uh, again, there's a playlist on that episode as well. Just put it up here. You can watch that uh, progress. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. There is a spirit in each generation that calls us to build a better way. To make life safer and much easier to control. More peaceful and quiet and more refined. Spirit of Change, introducing the new Ford Falcon and a whole new generation of improvements. Ford Falcon, that's the spirit.